ladies and gentlemen, this is Harry Brailsford from SMB Nation bringing you another in our series of weekly webinars. A little bit of housekeeping up front before we get going is uh, this is our regularly scheduled educational webinar. Um, tomorrow you'll receive a thank you letter for attending along with uh, important links and attachments related to today's webinar. So please listen intently and then we'll follow up with uh, additional information. Uh, next week we have a weekly webinar um, that follows up on the small business server conversation we had back in early March. So mark your calendars for that. Be sure to use the chat feature today to answer, uh, to, I'm sorry, to ask your questions, which we'll then be delighted to answer. And uh, with that said, I hope that you're enjoying the springtime as we head into summer. And um, I'm, I'm excited, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, I'm with Ken Shaw today, and the uh, webinar is titled uh, InfraScale's Vision for Cloud Data Protection and Collaboration. So Ken, it's, it's good to connect with you and uh, have a conversation with the SMB Nation community. How are you doing, sir? Great, Harry. It's good to be here and uh, get an opportunity to talk to, to the SMB Nation. Perfect. Perfect. Well, um, why don't we jump right into it? I, I, I see you have the slide up on the screen, so let's let's take a look and a listen to what you have to say. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Harry. Um, so, the, good morning, everybody, or I guess good afternoon. <coughs> Excuse me if you're if you're joining us from the East Coast. My name's Ken Shaw. I'm the CEO over here in Infrascale. Um, yeah, just a brief agenda, and then. Uh, uh, a couple of housekeeping items also. Uh, we'll be going through who InfraScale is as a company, what our platform does, talking a little bit about the observations we've got about data protection in the cloud and how the market's changing, talk about this new uh, sort of laser focus that customers have on security and privacy. Then we'll talk about our platform. And then lastly, we'll talk about our partnership programs and how we work with the channel and how uh, you know we'd like to work with some, some of you in the SME nation. Uh, we will be doing a Q and A at the end of the presentation. It'll be about a 35-minute uh, slide deck, followed by that Q and A. So find the questions tool in the GoToWebinar software to ask questions. Feel free to ask anything. Um, and one little surprise: we'll be uh, giving off a Kindle to the the person who asks the most questions. Um, so uh, so if you're paying attention and something piques your interest, go ahead and do that. We'll be we'll be announcing who wins that Kindle by email. All right, so who is InfraScale? We're a company based in Los Angeles, or El Segundo, just by uh, LAX. And we've been around quite a long time, almost 10 years, uh, with a focus on selling a platform that allows businesses to protect, archive, and share business data securely and simply. So the sort of overall meta observation that we've got is that while the cloud is transforming many parts of the infrastructure scene, it's uh, the, the rate of change that the cloud is bringing about is particularly prevalent in these three markets denoted by the circles. How we do file sharing and collaboration, how we do server backup and server-based data protection, and how we do endpoint backups and endpoint data protection. And the, our other observation and belief is that companies shouldn't need to procure three different systems to, to fill these use cases. So the InfraScale platform really sits at the nexus of these three markets and with one platform, one tool set, one management layer allows you to provide to your customers all three of these. Cloud file sharing, endpoint backup to the cloud, server backup and archiving to the cloud. And there's a couple of big tailwinds behind sort of the change that's going on in the industry. One is this trend toward the fragmentation of data, so data spreading out across different device types, be it BYOD or corporate devices, data spreading out across virtualized servers and VM sprawl versus physical servers. And then also far more recently, particularly in the last 12 months, there's been an enormous spotlight shone on cloud privacy and security. And those are two words that are different but related. We're going to talk more about the distinction between cloud privacy and cloud security as we go through the slides and what that means for your customers and your business. A few other data points about who we are. Uh, we've got about 20 billion objects stored in our system. 
thousand channel partners around the world. We're a very channel focused company. Uh, about 90% of our business flows through the channel. So just about everything we do is done with an eye toward improving our product set for our channel partners. A million devices connected to our system, whether they be PCs or servers or mobile devices. 11 data centers around the world, actually 12 now, and we'll talk more about our infrastructure map later on in the presentation. All right, so let's get into a high-level view of the Infoscale platform and what it does. So this triangle you'll see over and over in our materials, uh, the triangle comes from the three markets that we're working with. And as an Infoscale partner, you get access to what we call Dashboard, which is a central management system. From there, you've got three different tool sets that you can deploy for your customers. One is a server and application backup tool set, Infrascale Backup, which is really our flagship product. At the bottom, EndGuard, which is endpoint data protection and device management. I'm going to talk a lot more about what we mean by that. Uh, and then FileLogger, which is cloud-based file sharing. That technology does well uh, with the analysts and the trade publications. We've won a lot of awards for our product and technology. But what we do even better than building product is working with our partners. And so uh, a lot of what we do is about educating and training and bringing our partners up to speed on cloud-based data protection and helping them go to market. I'll talk a lot more about that later on also. So what are the pain points that we're trying to solve for our partners? Uh, the, the big three that we hear when we're talking to partners, uh, you know, focus groups or just one-on-one -on -one conversations are, are these three on the left of this slide. The first one, too many solutions. Um, you know, the, the way this comes up in a conversation is I'm sick of maintaining so many different solutions for backing up file servers, for doing file sharing, for doing server backup, for doing endpoint backup. So a real proliferation of tool sets that makes it difficult as a managed service provider or an IT service provider to manage. Second big pain point that comes up is data sprawl. So uh, a company's data or a small business's data spreading out across VMs and physical boxes, public cloud and private cloud, BYOD devices and corporate devices, the become quite difficult just to track where all that data is now. And then the other big one that always comes up is this desire to move to a recurring revenue model. So a lot of our partners historically had a lot of one-time revenue uh, around selling equipments or doing refreshes. And there's a desire among our partner base to move into a more SaaS-based model, recurring revenue model, to get predictable, profitable revenue. And we very much help with that because all three of our solutions are designed to be sold on a subscription basis. In terms of the types of people that we work with, uh, the number one subset of our customer base are managed service providers. So we've got hundreds and hundreds of managed service providers on the platform. Uh, also, IT and computer resellers, uh, hosting companies, we've got some specialized solutions for people who have their own data center, which could be as simple as a colo rack in a data center, but we've got some custom solutions I'll talk about there. We also work a lot with multi-tier distributors. So for some folks on the line, you might actually have resellers that sit beneath you in your distribution hierarchy. We've got a solution for that. And then a couple of other sort of markets that we serve, IT support companies and uh, telco have all, have all evolved as quite strong markets for us also. Uh, we're going to pop a poll here in a second just to get a sense of how this tracks to you, our audience today. Uh, so the poll that Heather's about to go live with is a poll that asks you what's the biggest pain point that you're dealing with in your business. So Heather, why don't you go ahead and put that poll up. There we go. Yeah, nice poll. And I see organizers and panelists can't vote, so I'll I'll uh, I'll stand down, Ken. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. And so, Heather, when you think we've got enough people who voted for that, maybe you can share the results with us in real time and tell us what, uh, what our audience is saying. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love the polling feature of webinars, Kim, by the way. Very nice touch to, to hear, hear from the customer in real time. Absolutely. All right, Did, uh, Heather, are you able to tell us what the what the result said? Let's see. I see your slide again, Heather. If you have a chance to pop up the results. Here we go. Uh, Ken, I actually have a chat from from Heather. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, read that to you. And it looks like up on chat, 13% uh, say it's too complex, 50% said it's too expensive, 38% said none of the above, and that is of a, a census, 100% of the people voted. Um, does that make sense, Ken? Absolutely. We have 50% saying it's too expensive is about right on, Harry. Um, Excellent. All right. Well, we aim to help solve that. So for those of you who said it's too expensive, uh, we can definitely help you address that. Um, and we're going to talk more about that and how easy it is to get going with us a bit later on in the presentation. So let's march on. Um, a few example customers. Uh, I think the most important thing to know is that there are more than 900 cloud brands running on the InfraScale platform today. There are some high profile companies like AVG with a couple hundred million users on our system. Uh, Malwarebytes, you may be familiar with, very, very popular anti-malware solution. Uh, Digicel, uh, large global telco. Uh, but really what we specialize in is small managed service providers and IT companies. Uh, that's our bread and butter. Um, and uh, you know, I think that's a good, a good fit with the SMB Nation uh, membership. So let's talk a bit now about our vision for the market. And then I'll get more particular and we'll actually look at the product itself. Uh, this slide really depicts sort of uh, the story we were talking about before, that once upon a time, data infrastructure was relatively straightforward. Um, for 20 years, the, the pattern was pretty standard. So on the left, we depict that all of the business's apps are running on premise. The compute was the more expensive thing, cost more than storage. Where there were endpoints, there were company-owned endpoints running Windows that were coming into the network over VPN, and most of the data sat inside the network. Fast forward to the right-hand side of the slide, which is where we are today, and it's a complete mess. We've got apps on-prem, we've got apps out in the public cloud, like Salesforce. Internally, storage is now costing more than compute in the data center. The file server is, has pretty much become broken because it just doesn't work with the myriad of devices that we're dealing with. Out in the field, we've then got a you know a, a bewildering panoply of panoply of, of devices that we're dealing with, whether it be Mac or Windows or BYOD or corporate or Android devices or Windows Phone devices or iPhone devices. It's uh, it's a complete mess, and so we look at that and we try and simplify things for our partners. So this sort of harmonious vision is the idea that instead of worrying about an on-prem file server, instead of worrying about on-prem backup to disk or tape for servers, you can deploy one software solution that will work on every front-end device you can imagine, whether it's BYD or corporate-owned, whether it's Mac or Windows, iOS or Android. We can then protect all of the servers that you've got. We can back them up and archive them and even do full DR on them, whether they're email servers, file servers, or database servers. And then we'll do all of this with our cloud software, which can either be run in your data center in a private cloud mode or in our data centers um, or in a hybrid operation, we're using a bit of both. So these bullet points on the left really tell you what we're trying to do. We're trying to simplify data protection. That's key. We're trying to help you manage devices with built-in mobile device management and built-in remote wipe and geo-tracking. We'll talk more about that. We're trying to fix file sharing. There's, you know, you've got solutions out there like Dropbox, which are great solutions for consumers. Uh, there isn't something as simple as that for businesses that's widespread, and we've built it and just baked it into our platform. So you don't need to go and buy a cloud file sharing system. You can just use the file locker module within InfraScale. Um, and so this diagram really gives you a sense of everything that you get when you partner with InfraScale. So I'll start in the middle. In the middle, you've got our dashboard, and that's what drives everything and controls everything and lets you manage your 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 business, so to speak. 
then down the bottom we've got the three different categories of devices that we deal with. So on the left we've got servers and our product lets you do very powerful backup uh, of servers, mainly file servers, email servers and database servers. And that can either be just data backup or you can do full disk images for those servers if that's what you want to do and recover from bare metal. Or you can convert those images into virtual machines and you can run them in the cloud so you can do full DR as a service. Moving across to laptops and desktops, we've got both a full device backup system, which will silently back up every bit of data on that device to the cloud. And then we've also got a sync and share module that lets the user interact with it and sort of have their own, quote, Dropbox, unquote, type of solution. Um, and then for mobile endpoints, similarly, we've got a full backup service that backs up those mobile endpoints, as well as a sync and share option. Now, built into all of these tools are then some additional platform technologies, like our device tracking and geolocation technology. Uh, we're going to see that in action a bit later on, but it allows you to locate these devices wherever they are. Think, find my iPhone, but for every single device. And it goes one step further. It enables you to do remote wipe. So you can actually delete data. And you can do that either selectively or you can completely nuke a device. So if the BYOD device of an employee, and we only want to kill off the files that are company files, because maybe the employee got fired, you can do that. But if the device got stolen, then we can literally format the device remotely. And we can do all of that from the Infoscale dashboard. Now across the top, you'll see these three different clouds. And one of the things that we talk about is that our solutions run in your cloud, in our cloud, or any cloud. What we mean by that is that you can use our turnkey solution plug into one of the infrascale points of presence. Alternatively, you can host it in your own data center or on premise if you prefer to do that. Or lastly, you can put it out to a third party cloud. So if you're comfortable and your customers are comfortable with Azure or Amazon Web Services, you can run our software out there. So a lot of flexibility is the way that we, uh, that we allow you to host the solution. So let's go on and talk a bit about security and encryption. Um, you know, one of the big things that's happened in the last 12 months, I'll say, is this new focus on security and privacy. And there have been a couple of really big events in the news, whether it was the original disclosure of PRISM, whether it's the ongoing disclosures driven by Edward Snowden, uh, whether it was the recent hard bleed uh, vulnerability that was discovered. That cloud security and cloud privacy is now, it's nearly the number one talk about whenever you talk about a cloud solution, particularly cloud storage or cloud backup, where a customer is entrusting the cloud with their data. Um, and I'm going to talk about how Infrascale wasn't affected by Heartbleed and Infrascale wasn't affected by uh, the NSA and PRISM disclosures in the next couple of slides. And that's because of our unique approach to double-blind encryption, which enables true privacy and a zero-trust model, uh, which is quite powerful. And then the other big trend that I think we've talked about is this, uh, that companies, are, are look, businesses are looking for simplicity. You know, they want something that's cheap, they want something that's easy. So an integrated platform that can give them DR, archiving, backup, all in one solution. So I made a bold statement when I said that we weren't affected by Heartbleed or the, or the Snowden disclosures. What am I talking about here? Well, we have a, a, an approach to securing data that we call ultra-safe. And on this diagram, I'll actually start at the bottom of the slide, because this depicts how most cloud companies deal with data. So you've got files on a, on a device. Those files will be sent raw over an SSL connection to the cloud, and then they'll get to the cloud and be encrypted and stored in the cloud. And so you can see those files in, in that encrypted box in the cloud, in the, in the bottom diagram. Well, there's two problems with that. Firstly, we recently found out that SSL wasn't secure and notifications went out from Box, from Dropbox, from you, know, you name it, saying that they were affected by the Heartbleed vulnerability. And secondly, this model requires you to trust the cloud service provider with the keys to unlock the data. And as the ongoing Snowden disclosures have proven and shown, that that data is actually not as private as customers might have thought. In the top diagram, it depicts what Infrascale does. So before data ever leaves a device, it gets encrypted with a, uh, an encryption key that you, the customer, or you, the controller of the data, knows. Then it's shipped over an SSL connection, 
Then when it gets to the cloud, it's encrypted again with a different key that's controlled by us. So you end up with data being stored in two encryption containers, two encryption envelopes, if you will, as depicted on the top right of this slide. And that means that we can't unlock the data unless we've got my key and your key. And this is what we call a double-blind encrypted storage system. And this is where the difference between security and privacy really becomes apparent. Everyone in the cloud industry talks about security. Some companies are more secure than others. Some companies misrepresent their security capabilities. But few people talk about cloud privacy. And we here at Infoscale actually believe that the focus needs to shift to a conversation about cloud privacy. Because you shouldn't have to trust a company with your data. In fact, you shouldn't need to trust anyone. Systems should be designed and architected so that there's zero trust, like the Infrascale UltraSafe system is. And so in our model, we cannot access data that's stored in our cloud, even if we were subpoenaed, even if we were legally compelled to, the data is useless without your key. Uh, and that's a very, very important point, and resonates, at least we've found, resonates uh, widely with, with customers uh, and with our channel. So this diagram just gives you a sense of where our public cloud infrastructure is. Um, if you're in Canada, you can host your, your data in Canada. If you're in the United Kingdom, same thing, Johannesburg. Uh, we give you basically a choice of where you want your data to reside. We can do geographically redundant storage also. Um, and we're adding to this map all the time. So uh, for those of you who might be listening to this webinar from outside of North America, I think this is particularly important. Um, we get a lot of requests from our international partners to keep data in their sovereign jurisdictions. Um, and uh, ask your partner specialist here at Infrascale if we've got any additions to this, because this map is always being, being improved upon. All right, so let's take a brief tour now of what the products do at a granular level, and, um, and then we'll get on with uh, the Q&A section after that. So in these next three slides, uh, I'm sort of going to flip through them, and as you see, the, the, the bar across the top lights up in different colors. So what we've got across the top is everything that the Infrascale platform does, and then we, we've broken it into the three major buckets that we talk about. So when we're talking about Infrascale Backup, this is a great solution for backing up servers that your customers have got. If you've got an Exchange server or a SQL server or a file server, Infrascale Backup and Recovery is a fantastic solution. You can either set it up so that it runs straight to cloud, or if you prefer doing, using disk to disk to cloud, you can do that so that you've got an on-site copy of backup data as well. You've got cloud-based management. It's got built-in agents for SQL Server and Exchange. Uh, we've got Exchange message level recovery, so you could recover an, an entire Exchange server, or you could recover just a mailbox or even just a message. There's a bare metal backup option, so you can back up uh, and create full disk images for rapid recovery. And then you can even virtualize those disk images and boot them in the cloud with our cloud boot option, which is really the ultimate in data protection. Building burns down. We can have your server up and running and available for users and for workloads within four hours. Um, so if you talk to one of the, the partner specialists here at Infrascale, ask about cloud boot. Then NGUARD is our endpoint data protection solution. And with endpoints, data protection is about more than just backup. It's about more than just archive. It goes to tracking and controlling the data. So with NGUARD, we prioritize features like device location, like uh, device authorization. So let's let Harry log in from his Android, but we shouldn't let Harry log in from his iPhone, because we know that's not an authorized device. We can do remote wipe. Um, also, quite a uh, sort of a technical feature, but our mass deployment tool is really powerful. You don't need a Caseo or any other system to do a mass deployment with Infrascale. We help you build an MSI that you can roll out to 100 computers in just a few minutes. So we really try and simplify uh, everything that we're doing. We've also got great analytics built in so that you can provide reports to your customers on who's backing up what and how many problems have occurred uh, and really visualize that information for you. And then our file locker module. This is our uh, solution to say box.com. Box is a great product, but it's just one simple product. And it's very expensive. We believe that file sharing is going away as its own category. It's just going to be a feature within platforms like our own. And so uh, file locker is a fantastic tool. Uh, it's got some powerful features like built-in uh, editing, unlimited versioning, unlimited storage per user, 
again, our double-blind, ultra-safe encryption, uh, which really sets it apart. And I think that was a big reason why Infotech uh, ranked our system as the, the best in from the product perspective in their most recent roundup on tools. So Infotech does an annual study of cloud file sharing tools. And in this magic quadrant here on the, on the screen, the y-axis, or the up and down, is superiority of product offering. And the left, the, the x-axis, left to right, is uh, the heft of the vendor, the commercial success of the vendor. Well, we're a young company, so we're in the, the top left company, Innovators. But you'll notice that we were put ahead of every other product here from a product and technology standpoint. We beat Box, we beat Citrix, we beat Google, we beat Microsoft. Uh, and so I think that is testament to our obsession here with building great products and great products that our partners ask us for and help us design and then help us take to market. Then the last thing is the Infrascale Cloud Appliance. This allows you to take everything I've talked about, we give it to you on one piece of hardware, you can drop it in a rack in your data center and now you're good to go. So you can, you can host the entire Infrascale platform on a single piece of hardware and we, can, we also ship that as a virtual appliance. So if you've already got Hyper-V or VMware-based infrastructure, then we can just ship you the virtual appliance for you to run on those hypervisors. All right, we'll take a quick spin through some product screenshots. Um, and uh, you know what? I actually like to do a live demo. So I'm going to just pull up my browser here, and hopefully this works. Um, Harry or Heather, if there's any problem with that, just let me know. But uh, I've, I've got Chrome up on screen here with a live yeah, it looks good. dashboard and a little yeah, bit it looks good and there we go oh so the zoom on this I've got a really low resolution screen I'm using here so I'm gonna to have to scroll down but what you can see here is get a quick snapshot of where I'm backing up 346 gigs to the cloud I backed up 25 gigs last month I got a stoplight system here that tells me what's going on I got three errors that I need to do something about uh, a couple of warnings Here's some, some immediate analytics so I can get a quick snapshot of what's been going on in the space. Now, let's say I want to look at my devices. Well, from the cloud, from the dashboard, I've got real-time remote control. So these green lights tell me that I've got real-time control of these machines right now. I can see what version of the software they're running when they last backed up, and I can do all sorts of things. I can change a backup policy, I can run a backup now, I can upgrade them. If I go across into data loss prevention, I then get some really cool options. So this Lasso demo server here is sitting in, in this office with me. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and here, I'm going to say that I want to wipe this device. And I'm going to stop at this screen for obvious reasons. But I could go ahead and I could selectively wipe data off this device, or I could nuke the entire system if I wanted to. All built in, and obviously there's uh, security issues there, and it's got two-factor authentication around that, but a very powerful tool. Analytics out of the box, so if I want to, for example, I love this view. Um, for me, there's nothing better than the Apple calendar to help me organize my life. When I'm thinking about backups, I love this view because I can see, hey, what's going on in this network? I got these six machines, seven machines. Who's been backing up happily? Who's been having errors they got to do something about? Oh, we had errors, but then it fixed itself? Cool, I'm not going to worry about that. And by the way, that's actually my Mac. <laughs> And then I can, do, I can look at other views. So I can do a 24-hour analysis. I can do it 30 days. And then lastly, I can locate devices. So uh, this was me being, I was in Australia recently. And so you can track down where I was and what I did. All of this built into the Infrascale system. And this is just a sneak preview. I'm not going to do a, a, a wide-ranging demo right now. But I, I really encourage you to come to some of the Infrascale uh, webinars. We hold our own product demo webinars once a week. Uh, and uh, you can find out about those on infrascale.com if you click on the webinars option. All right, so let's talk about how you can get all this good stuff. Um, we have three ways we work with partners. First one's the easiest one. You can call up today and you can be up and running with your own white label solution this afternoon. Um, so literally we can do it same day. We host everything, it's turnkey. You just worry about the software, you go in, you upload your logo, you rebrand the products, and now you have all this technology under your brand with your logo, your color scheme, and you're ready to sell. In the middle, uh, we've got our public cloud option for distributors. This is for those among you who might have resellers beneath you. Um, and then the last one on the right is private cloud for distributors. Uh, there's also a private cloud option for, for regular partners, by the way. So if you've got a rack somewhere, if you've got your own data center, 
um, then you can really help. You can really drive down your cost by running this on your own infrastructure. Um, and I'll make you this guarantee. 50% uh, of you said the cloud data protection is too expensive. I guarantee you this. We won't be beaten on price by anyone. We have the best product on the market, and we have the best price in the market. And we compete with folks like Intronus and uh, Unitrends and a bunch of other companies. But our partners make 50% margin, uh, at least. And we're dedicated to the profitable success of our partner community. And so if, the, if your concern is that cloud data protection is too expensive, have a chat with us. Let us talk through and let us show you how you can do this very inexpensively in a way that is wonderfully profitable for you and extremely simple for your customers. Uh, in terms of go to market, I think I've covered most of this. You've got a lot of hosting options, uh, you have resellers and distributors. And then this is, I think, my last pitch slide. It is. <laughs> so some other features about the program, US-based support. 24 hours a day during the week and then 12 hours a day on the weekends. Wonderful knowledge base, uh, very extensive. Partner Resource Center, I'd love to take the time to take you through that. I don't have a lot of time uh, left in the presentation, but our Partner Resource Center is a, a library filled with resources for you, brochures that you can use and you rebrand. Everything we have, you can rebrand and put your own logo on it. So sell sheets, email marketing templates that you can use, proposals that you can rebadge and give to your customers for a risk assessment or for a DR implementation, uh, invoice template that allow you to bill your customers. So we get a lot of partners who come to us who are very technically competent, maybe uh, a couple of guys who formed an IT shop. They don't have dedicated marketing staff. They may only, might only have one sales guy. So we've created an entire toolkit that helps you go to market selling these services so that you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, training. We do ongoing live training in sessions just like this that are happening every week on several different streams. There's a sales training track, there's a marketing track, there's a product track. Our partner advisory community is something that I'm really passionate about. Uh, I jokingly refer to them as the Pac-Man, um, but it's our partners who, who can see our roadmap, suggest features, and vote on features. So one of the cool things about our software is that we don't build anything without a reason, and the reason is nearly always that a bunch of partners voted for a feature. And so our product roadmap has been driven by our channel and will continue to be driven by our channel and therefore is guaranteed to service the needs of our channel. Um, and so the pack is, is, is a really cool thing. When you talk to your partner specialist, you can ask about it and you can see it. But we just publish the roadmap, what's coming up, we talk to the partners, uh, partners pitch us ideas, those ideas then get voted on and they bubble up to the top and we, we build and ship them. Uh, we're releasing updates every two weeks so the platform is moving very, very quickly. And then lastly, you get a dedicated account manager. So these guys, these, we call them partner specialists, but they will work with you to get you into the program and then on an ongoing basis. So we've got partners who will often use our staff as their sales engineer. And so let's say I'm from ABC Computers. I'll call up my customer and say, hi, this is Ken from ABC Computers. I want to introduce you here to my sales engineer, Michelle. Now, Michelle's one of the InfraScout guys, but your customer doesn't have to know that. We're there to support you and help grow your business. A little quote from one of our customers here. So Reed Tankley from Spotlight Financial said, InfraScout gives him great peace of mind, knowing that his, all his computers are being backed up, gives me a great way to access files when I'm out of the office. There are thousands of other testimonials like this. If you're in a particular vertical or region or industry and you'd like to talk to some of our existing partners and, and hear how we are from the horse's mouth, just do that. Talk to your partner special and ask for a reference in, in, your, in, in whatever type of business you're running. And that brings us to the end of today's webinar. We're going to go into Q&A now. And remember, we're giving away that Kindle. So if you're, uh, if you're a fan of Kindles or haven't tried one, we're giving that to the person who asked the most questions. Um, but really encourage you to firstly talk to a partner specialist and get a free evaluation of the platform. So you can sign up, you can call in today and you can be using the software tonight um, and seeing if it's, a, if it's a good fit to use. Completely free, no risk. Uh, secondly, if you call in the next 30 minutes, you'll receive NGARD for free with your trial. NGARD's usually got to be switched on separately. And there's a variety of phone numbers here on the screen. Uh, the US toll free number, United uh, number for the United Kingdom, Australia, and then South Africa. Eric, anything to add? <clears throat> I think it's time for questions. I think it's time for questions too. All right, Harry, how are we doing these questions? 
Okay, so we, we have a question coming in. We have questions coming in. So, folks, be sure to use the chat feature to ask your questions. And remember that uh, they have a, a prize, uh, uh, a Kindle. So first question I see here, uh, question one, how do you deal with the Apple cert issues for iPhones? Do you provide that, or are we required to get them direct from Apple? It's a great question. You've got to get them from Apple, but we'll handhold you through that process because it can be a bit of a bear. Um, and so we've done that many, many times, uh, and we can definitely help you navigate those waters. Excellent. Question two. We use SharePoint. Anything you can help with that integration? Yeah, I didn't talk about this. Uh, good question. So um, with FileLogger, which is our cloud file sharing solution, one of the observations we've got is that uh, lots of companies don't want to throw out what they, they, they have for content and replace it with something like a box, right? Um, so with FileLocker, we let you plug it into existing infrastructure like a SharePoint or like a NetApp file server maybe or a Windows file server. So your users can just be using the app on their iPhone. They can just be, you know, syncing and sharing on their, on their computers. They don't need to sort of worry about where the data is coming from that data can actually be coming from a SharePoint server, or can actually be coming from like a NetApp filer. We're working on a bunch of other enterprise integrations so that in the future you'll be able to plug into things like open text. Um, so we have more of a snuggle strategy rather than sort of a, a rip and replace strategy. And we want to play nice with uh, things like SharePoint, NetApp, and other existing enterprise infrastructure. Okay, great, great. And question three. I have a large number of customers who need this solution. How can I uh, easily deploy this to everyone? Well, I would start by calling in and getting an evaluation. Um, and then the second thing I'd do is I'd look at the mass deployment wizard right there within the Infrascale dashboard. So it's designed to help you build custom installers to roll this thing out to hundreds and hundreds of users. One of the early pain points that we would hear from our partners is this is an awesome set of technology, but I've got like I've got 50 clients and I've got 10, in, 10 devices each, so I've got to go around and install this on 500 separate nodes. Uh, and so we automated that and simplified that. Okay, great. And folks, just a reminder that uh, use the chat feature to ask your questions. Uh, we'll continue, but there is that prize of the, the Kindle. Question four, what about recovery? Did you mention anything about recovery time? That's a great question. So um, I am our chief backup nerd, and I usually have trouble talk, having a sentence without RTO and RPO in it. I didn't talk about that today, but we, you can design, so RTO, recovery time objective, RPO, recovery point objective. With our tools, you can design a solution for pretty much any RTO and RPO configuration you want. So if you, for example, would like the ability to magically press a button and have your server running because the building burnt down, in other words, have an RTO of like you know, minutes to hours. Um, we can do that with our cloud boot option. Now that's more, a bit more expensive, right? On the other end of the spectrum, if you've got data that just needs to be archived and it's okay to wait, say, a day to get it back, we've got very inexpensive, high volume archiving solutions that do that. Um, so recovery time, so the short answer is, I didn't talk a lot about RTO and RPO, um, but depending on what your goals are for those two vectors, there's something in our solution that will work for you. Okay, great. Next question is, uh, is there someone in the Dallas Data Center that can be contacted for more information? Uh, so in our doubt, no. So uh, where, so all of our partner specialists are here in El Segundo, which is headquarters. Um, but if you want to have data sitting in Dallas, that's no problem at all. So yeah, you, uh, I would encourage you to call in 877-896-3611 and ask to speak to a partner specialist and they can absolutely help you with that. Okay, great. Uh, next question is, can we purchase file sharing without the backup feature? Uh, yes and no. Um, our sort of opening package comes with a little bit of everything, right? Um, but then you can certainly excuse me, you can certainly then increase your capacity just on the file sharing piece. Um, so you do get a little bit of everything, but uh, you don't have to use those other things. 
Um, and we've got a lot of partners who are very file locker, that's our, our, our CFS module centric, um, and do it that way. But again, call in and talk to your partner specialist uh, and they can help craft a, a solution for you. Okay, great. And then I have, uh, we use Veeam. Can you integrate Veeam as a depository? So a Veeam question. Veeam's a great product. Uh, and yeah, we can cohabitate with Veeam. Um, Veeam is really great on the LAN. It's not so great on the WAN, although they're doing some things to try and improve that. But you could absolutely take, uh, use Veeam to back up your, you know, your host to an on-site repository and use our technology to get that off-site and store that inexpensively. Okay, great. And then we have, uh, I'm in Canada. Where are your data centers located again? Uh, good question. So there's a ton of them, um, and you, should, you can look at the data center map on the website to get all of them, but our Canadian data center is based in Toronto. Okay. Uh, and folks, uh, let's see, oh, another question just came in. We've had a good flow of questions, but be sure to use that chat feature and understand Ken will be drawing for a Kindle prize um, from the people that asked the question. So question that just popped in, uh, what type of devices can you protect? I know you went over that, but, but I'd like to hear it again myself. Yeah, great, great question. Let me pull up that slide. Um, I call it the octopus, <laughs> this slide right here. The, um, so if we think about the three buckets that we protect, it's you know servers and then peak, PCs, I'll loosely call them, but laptops and desktops, and then mobile. Um, let's go left to right. In serverland, we're talking about uh, file server, email server, database server. So the most common things we're doing are Windows file servers, SBS, Exchange, SQL server. In laptops and desktops, we're seeing a lot more Mac. So this is both Windows and Mac that we're looking at here. And then in mobile endpoints, it's a real mess of things that we support. Um, so we support everything I'm about to rattle off. iPhone, iPad. Android tablet, Android phone, Windows phone, BYOD devices, corporate devices. So um, the only notable exception is BlackBerry, um, but we haven't made the investment in the BlackBerry platform and probably are not going to. Okay, great. So folks, last call for questions. And uh, while uh, maybe you're formulating your final questions, um, I, I would offer, Ken, that uh, the yeah the whole device area boy that's that that's just it's a new world it's it's just yeah it's unbelievable um, we do have another question that came in so uh, question reads uh, I use Datto for all servers can your solution just handle desktops etc without servers absolutely Datto is another good little company um, you know Datto is on-prem appliance, um, not the cloud is sort of not, uh, it's not um, as well developed as some other cloud <laughs> offerings, let's say that. Um, and so you could use our technology, by the way, to take data data off-site and store it inexpensively. Their, their cloud service is quite expensive. But what you said is, is also absolutely true. Uh, for our endpoint solutions, excellent. Data is a very server-oriented device for backing up servers. So you could definitely use our technology in conjunction with Datto. Um, also, an interesting point, under the hood, Datto is just really shadow protect, right? And so from our dashboard, you can monitor and control and configure the shadow protect, the storage cross shadow protect product. Um, so yeah, absolutely, we can help you. We can, we, can, we can beef up the Datto experience. How about I put it like that? Very cool. Uh, folks, this is the second to last call for questions. Uh, so I'll give it just about um, the uh, uh, a second here. Let me just read a, a note from the control room. Stand by, folks. Let's see. Uh, Okay, just we do have a final question. It's it's a little bit lengthy. Forgive me, Ken. I just I I uh, I, I I guess I know how to write, but I don't read as quick. <laughs> so let's 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 give this a shot. So this is from the individual. The gentleman writes, "You answered my question uh, using just file sharing by saying that basically you have to purchase both." 
will that ever change? My biggest pain point is file sharing. I don't need backup now and can't justify paying for it and not using it. Uh, wow. Well, that. Uh, <laughs> tell us what you really think, sir. Ken, I, I, you, you, you never duck a question. Go ahead and hit it head on. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Um, so look the, look, the truth is that six months ago, the answer is yes, we would have sold you the file sharing module by itself. And depending on volume, the truth is that we might still do that for you today, but it doesn't sound like you're going to come in and order 100 terabytes. So what I would say to you is um, call your partner specialist and look at the base offering. It's very inexpensive. Um, and the, uh, the backup component um, is awesome, and you might play with it, and you might fall in love with it. But if you didn't, um, there's probably a deal that could be worked out that supports your business needs. One of the one of the big things that we do do is we we go through what we call an ROI with every prospect. So we sit down, we ask you a bunch of questions about your business, and we help you model it to figure out if we're for you. We're not for everyone. I want to be really clear about that. We're not we're not for everyone. Um, but if file sharing is a pain point for you, then FileLogger is a kick-ass solution. Um, I think you should talk to our partner specialist, and they'll quickly figure out if there's a price point in a package that works for you. It might still just have a little taste of backup in there, um, but who knows, you might like it. Very cool. Well, that does represent the questions we have. We've done a first call and a second call, and we'll call it a final call for questions. Uh, so. So Ken, uh, in terms of your generosity in the giveaway, I'm just trying to think this through. The questions are forwarded to me on chat. I know the questions uh, will appear on the post um, event spreadsheet uh, that, that Heather will get to you and I. So um, did, did you have ideas on how you'd like to award the Kindle or would you like to, to take it to the, uh, the spreadsheet where you can kind of align with the, uh, the attendee name and contact information? Yeah, Harry, what we usually do is we look at that spreadsheet and then we, uh, we figure out who won and then we send an email out within 24 hours. So we'll work with okay. you on that. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I'm sorry to sound so naive. I just We have anonymity on the chat feature the way it's presented to me, so bear with me. <laughs> okay, terrific. Well, thanks, Harry, okay. for having us on today. This was, uh, this was fun. Oh, absolutely. So thank you so much. Folks, thanks for joining us on our weekly educational webinar series. And remember, next week, same time, we're going to have a follow-up webinar to that early March webinar about the next version, the un-webinar we did, the next version of SBS. Um, I have uh, what's, in a sense, about a 90-day update for you on how that went. 60 days, 90 days, I don't know. But I have, a, I have an update for you. Um, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you, folks, for attending. Have a great day. Thanks very much. Bye-bye now.